I want to talk about alternating current in the A level. So we're going to talk about alternating current and the formula of alternating current as well as the form, which is the sinusoidal current. We're going to talk about the voltage of an alternating current, which is an alternating voltage. And we're going to talk about the power of alternating currents using the root mean squared of the alternating current as well as the alternating voltage values. So let's start. The first thing you need to know about these alternating currents is that they are sinusoidal currents. And that means that they have this. If you graph them out with respect to time, this is what turns out. It's a sine curve. And so, you know, the definition of an alternating current is a current that goes back and forth. It changes direction regularly. It doesn't mean that it has to be this regular sinusoidal current, though. It could be jerky, it could be erratic, it doesn't have to be this smooth curve. However, in the A level, we are only concerned with regular sinusoidal motion. So think of this, at least at this level. The current has, has a variation that's cyclical. So that means that they frequently change directions and it follows this type of motion where it increases and then it slowly decreases and then it changes direction, increases in magnitude, decreases in magnitude, changes direction, and that keeps going. Now, this has to remind you of something. The graph has the same shape as the motion described in simple harmonic motion and hence can be described in the same way. Something that's very common in physics as well as engineering is when you find that a certain phenomena or a certain phenomenon has this, some sort of formula and you know another phenomenon that has the exact same formula or it has the same form. Um, then you can take whatever results, whatever experiments has happened in that other phenomenon and you can also apply to this one. Let's give you an example. For instance, the force of attraction between two charges is this, is a constant of proportionality, and then we have charge one, charge two, divided by separation squared. However, the force of attraction between two masses, that's gravitational attraction, is gmm over r squared. So the form of these two is the same, and this is why if we already have models that describe gravitational attraction, we can use those models to describe like different charges that are attracted electrostatically and so that means that we can take what we know about simple harmonic motion and bring it over to alternating current since they already have the same form what's also interesting is that the electrons in an alternating current carrying wire move back and forth with simple harmonic motion and that makes perfect sense if you look at the graph now the the current here that is kind of you can think of it as the velocity graph of an an electron right because it's the rate of flow of charge so you can kind of think of this as a velocity graph it starts out at zero and then it accelerates towards a peak and then it goes down again and then it changes direction after it comes to a momentary stop and then it becomes very very fast and then it slows down again changes direction etc that is what simple harmonic motion is if you have an object in simple harmonic motion, what it will do is that it has an equilibrium position at which the velocity is maximum. And then you accelerate, you, you move very quickly and you're decelerating and you slow down at the end and you momentarily stop and then you change direction and you accelerate again and then you slow down, you stop. And then you, you know, that's, that's how it goes, right? And then the definition for simple harmonic motion is that the acceleration of the object is directly proportional to the displacement of the object from the equilibrium position and it acts in, in order to replace it back to the equilibrium. So it acts in the opposite direction as the displacement. That is exactly how the electrons are moving because you keep going one way and then you keep changing, reversing again and again. They don't really make progress. They just go here and they come back and this is this is what the electrons are doing inside that that wire so let's take a look at the simple harmonic motion equations these are the simple harmonic motion equations that you can also check out in the video that i posted about all the equations in simple harmonic motion we have all of these omega is 2 pi frequency and stuff like that we have all of this which can be useful so do check it out so that's why we get the equation of an alternating current, which is that the alternating current at any point in time is I O sine omega t. And this is just like the displacement, right? And this is because it's in a sinusoidal form. Now, 
the IO points towards the maximum current, right? So you take the maximum current and then you times it by the sign to get whatever is the current at that point in time. Omega in this situation is actually 2 pi f because this is not really circular motion. So you have to remember that omega is 2 pi f and f is 1 over the period. So if you substitute this inside, what you're essentially doing is omega is 2 pi 1 over t and that means if you times it in here, it's sine 2 pi times the time over the period. Let's say that the period is 3 seconds. So you have this and that is 3 seconds. And that is t. And let's say that you are currently trying to get, maybe you are at 1 second. Then we have 1 second is around here-ish. So you have t is 1 second. And so you substitute that in. What you will basically get is 1 over 3 times 2 pi. So you're basically calculating how much, like how much fraction of the full cycle you have gone. And then you just times it by 2 pi and then you get the final current. So current is always formed by the electromotive force or a voltage. And that's what drives the charges across. If you have an alternating current, then that means that there has to be an alternating voltage that is driving it. Because the voltage keeps changing, the current also keeps changing its direction. Now, in power generators, a coil turns in an external magnetic field, and this induces EMF. And so as you have seen in the previous video, this indu induces EMF that will continuously change direction in a sinusoidal way. So this electromotive force is also alternating, and it causes an alternating current. The EMF V varies sinusoidally as well. Hence, we can say that the, the voltage as well is the maximum voltage VO sine omega t, just like the alternating current. And so this is also using the simple harmonic motion equations. An oscilloscope is used to measure frequency and the voltage of an alternating current. So you can either use a cathode ray oscilloscope or a digital oscilloscope. And you have to be able to read these oscilloscopes, which I will make a video about in a while. So now let's talk about power and alternating current because we've talked about the, vol the voltage, we've talked about the, the, the current, so it makes sense to talk a little bit about power. And the question is, for alternating current, is the power that it supplies, the energy that it supplies, constant or is it also changing? Well, the answer is that it is actually changing constantly too. If you see some fluorescent lamps, you will see that sometimes you can see a very quick flickering, and that's because the power that is supplied is also changing. However, it's very, very difficult for us to be able to deal with a, a changing power. So what we are going to try and do is try to get the average power, the average energy per time, average energy dissipated per time. Now, in order to get that, because we know that P equals IV, we need these values. However, for us, these values keep changing because the alternating current and the alternating voltage are not the same. They don't stay constant. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get the average value of the alternating current and the average value of the velocity. This average value will stay constant and therefore we can use it in this equation. But getting this is a pretty difficult process. For this, we take a root look at the root mean square value. What is the root mean square value? The root mean square is a value of an alternating current. And this is the steady current which delivers the same average power as the alternating current to a resistive load. So a good way of picturing this is we take a lamp. We take a light bulb or something like that. And then we hook it to a direct current like direct current power supply and then we take another one and we hook this lamp which has to be the same power like it has to have all the same ratings as this, this one to make it fair and we hook it to an alternating power supply so when these two lamps are shining with equal brightness then this means that the direct current value over here is equal to 
whatever alternating current maximum value is over here. And so if you try this out, then what you're getting is this direct current is the root mean square of this alternating current, an average constant value that provides exactly the same on average as the alternating current. And the root mean square is very important because the AC is constantly fluctuating. We have to use a special way to get this because, as you know, this current is actually sinusoidal. The average value is you have to add everything together and then divide it. And if you add everything together over here, obviously, because half of it is the negative value, you're just going to get zero. And so the mean has no meaning when it comes to this. So we have to use a special way to get it. Now, we derive the root mean square by squaring the alternating current like that. If you square it, it's going to become something like this. We take the mean, which is the middle of that, and then we root it one more time. So we put a square root off it so that you can cancel out this sort of thing. So eventually we get like a take the current maximum and then you square that and then you take the average of that and then you square root it again. And so if you go through the entire process, which I will do in another video, you are going to finally get the answer that the root mean square is the maximum current divided by square root 2. 1 over square root 2 is, you know, approximately 0 0.707. So if you put this, you're going to get the root mean square is 0 0.707 times the maximum current. So just by knowing for a certain current what this is, IO, you can get the root mean square. And this is it. The average current that it provides is about here because it's like 70% of the total, right? So that's something very important. Now, because the voltage also has the same form as the current, it is also uh, VO sine omega t. So that means that we find the root mean square of the voltage in the same way. So VO is also going to be, oh yeah, VRMS, standing for V root mean square, it's going to be VO over square 2. And so what we do when we calculate power is that now we have two constant values that don't alternate anymore. They're the root mean squares of the voltage as well as the current. And so we can multiply these two together, which I've done here, because P is IV, and so we get power equals to the maximum current times the maximum voltage divided by 2, and that is our equation. And obviously, you can take these two and you can put it into any forms of these, but you have to remember to use the root mean squared, which is the maximum divided by root 2. Remember to use this and don't use this without multiplying anything. And then you'll be fine. So that's about it for this chapter on alternating currents. I have more coming up, for instance, with the derivation of the root mean squares, rectification, and transformers. So do stay updated for those videos, and I hope this helps. Thank you for watching.